Career Mode, Episode 3, Game Number 2, Can We Get a Win, with Sunderland against our rivals Middlesbrough. As you can see on our shortlist, we've got Cancelo, Semedo, Weisser, a load of other players here. Hopefully we can get one or two. And my plan is, because we have so much money, as you can see here, we still have £52 million in the budget. If I can't really get anybody that I really want, I might save it until the end of the transfer window and buy two, one or two players that are worth a lot of money, but they are very, very good. I definitely need a right winger because in the last game, Duncan Watmore wasn't the greatest, but we'll see how we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to head into the game. Sunderland versus Middlesbrough is our game today. And our topic, or the thing that I would love to talk about today, is going to be the Europa League final. Yes, that is right. It should, this video should be coming out at the same time as the final does. Fingers crossed. Or, well, I say the same time. It should come out a couple hours before, because I'm do editing it the day before, and I'm talking about this the day before. And I wanted to do it close to when the game is, just to get team news and things like that. And I know, obviously, there are a lot of players injured for Man United, but their squad is still pretty substantial. You know, they've still got Rooney, they've still got Carrick, uh, Phil Jones, they've got Pogba, obviously the big one. They've got Herrera. I think Eric Bailly is still uh, fit enough. He might be, because um, he came back recently. They've also got Jesse Lingard, who is a very good player. But the thing that they have, which is what... I think will help them win it over everything is they have a mix of youth and experience because they not only have those players that I mentioned before but they have obviously the likes of Lingard, Rashford, Martial and Pogba who are all pretty young. Uh, Phil Jones is quite young I guess as well but then you look at the players that they have in the quality they have De Gea obviously Pogba is a very good player you know top quality the most expensive player in the world they have Rooney, who's quality. Obviously, he's sort of waning at the moment. Ha, pun on his name, obviously. But they also have that mix of the youth as well with Rashford, but then experience of Carrick. And you compare that to Ajax, who's, I think, their last... I know they sort of changed it around because the league had already finished by then, but their last uh, game of the season, I think it was their third youngest or the third youngest ever in the Bundesliga. Bundesliga? The Eredivisie as the third youngest ever team, sort of like 22 years was the average age. And I think that's almost pretty much their average age of their squad because they've got their two leading players. They've got Bertrand Traore on loan from Chelsea, who's 22 maybe now or 21. And then they've got Kasper Dolberg, who's 19, which as a front two is very young considering Man United could play Wayne Rooney well if they were fit both fit they could have Ibrahimovic and Wayne Rooney combined age together is like 75 or 65 I mean I can't do math today but yeah so one of them's like 35 and one of them's 31 so that would be 66 not 65 I thought he was 30 for a second Wayne Rooney but it seems to me that the experience will count for something as well because you look at how poorly they played against Celta Vigo in both legs. I mean, the away leg, they were under a lot of pressure and they played a lot of games, but they were pretty poor. And I just feel like in this game, they're going to step it up because it's a final, because of the players they have. They have the nous, you know, Rooney's won the Champions League and he can pass that information on. And I think another thing that's going to be important for them is going to be their manager. Because you look at Jose Mourinho, he's won countless trophies and titles. Ever. I'm not going to list them all here because it would take a while. But countless trophies and titles all over the place. He's won Champions Leagues. He's won everything, pretty much. I don't think he's won the Europa League, but that's another story. But, you know, the Champions League is one of the most difficult things to win. In contrast, Ajax have such a young team. They have a youngish manager compared to most of them, but that was the halftime stats, as you could see behind there. Um, those halftime stats are kind of weird. I only had the one shot and I scored from it, so I don't mind. But going back to Ajax, their squad is so young. Their team is so young. It's almost like their squad from the early 2000s, where they had all those fantastic young players. 
um, including like Cliver, and I have no idea, no idea how that goal went in. I, <laughs> it was an own goal, but I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know how it went in. I was really confused when that went in, but I took it forward and tried to score, and again and again. Both the clubs have a very well-earned reputation in terms of youth development. Obviously, Man United, they've got a few younger players coming through and you've know, got the class of 92. Or, and then you look at Ajax and their emerging talent recently is an exciting generation. But they beat Willem 2, I think that is how it's said, but I just call them Willem 2. Um, they beat them 3-1 on the final day. And their starting 11, as I said before, I was mixed up, but I've been checking. Their starting 11 was the youngest in history in terms of the area divisi. It was 20 years and 139 days, which is just ridiculous. Their starting 11, there's... <laughs> I'm looking at it now. They've got, in goal, a 21-year-old, 21-year-old at right back. I'm not going to do their full formation, but they've got a 20-year-old, a 17-year-old, a 20-year-old, 24-year-old, 20-year-old, 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 19, and then an 18-year-old, which is just insane. Justin Kluivert, they're obviously a famous name. They've got some very, very good players there, but it's just mad how young their team is. And they obviously have a very clear idea of what, what their boss wants from their team and how they've been moulded sort of in the manager of Johan Cruyff or the style and again, I concede from Middlesbrough, and I do not know how I'm doing so bad in this game. But if you watch the last few minutes of this match, you'll see how much I pushed them and how much I wanted to score. But it was just one of those things in this game as it goes in. But you look at some of their players they have, and they do actually have a great midfield pairing with... Um, Van Beek and Davy Klaassen. I mean, Van Beek's very young and Davy Klaassen's slightly older. I think he's one of the oldest in the whole flipping squad. I mean, it's just insane how well they are. And obviously, they do have Kasper Dolberg, as I've said before. But he's got, I think, 16 goals in the league this year, which for him is fantastic. And I don't know why I passed it there, but I don't know how I didn't score there either. But they also have some very good older players in the squad I think um, he's not technically old but he is one that is older compared to their squad they've got a uh, zoot in goal who's going to be key for them because I do feel that they're going to be defending a lot in this game in the final but in terms of predictions going into the last 10 minutes of the match on screen I think predictions wise I have two predictions here I either think Man United are going to blow them out of the water because it will be the toughest test they've had in the competition for Ajax. And it will be maybe a step too far for them. But then on the other hand, I do think it could be a very, very tight game. And it may go extra time and penalties. But I do think if you had like put a bet on it, I would say that Man United would win after extra time. Or after the full time so it could be in extra time or it could be in penalties i'm not sure which but i do have a feeling that ajax are going to shock man you with how young and how pacey and how just fearless their squad could be as i said the first example maybe their fear they could actually get some fear in this game because they think oh hang on this is literally like the biggest game we've ever played and it could be just a step too far but i'm not sure that it will be a step too far for them and personally, I know it's something that some people say, oh, they should support, you should support the English teams in Europe. I think it'd be quite funny if Man United lost, just to see the face of Jose Mourinho. And obviously, I'm not one of those bit Chelsea fans that hates Mourinho since he's left. I actually think he's one, of, you know, he is the best manager we've ever had to date. So I, I've not really got any like, jealousy or, you know, any hatred towards him because he's such a fantastic manager. But. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see how, if this team, Ajax team, did win, how their careers would progress, because you look at some of their players, just so young, and that, on screen, as you can see, is full-time. So my prediction is Man United will win it in extra time or in penalties, basically. So, what I'm going to do, I'll meet you back into the past slash future, whatever that would be called in terms of the match. So I'll leave you there. As you can see, we did lose that game in the end. I don't know how we lost it. I don't know what happened with that penalty. I was trying to like clear the thing to check the next penalty takers or who was good at them. And for some reason, I pushed up on the left stick 
and it started to take the penalty so i just sort of panicked and did it and i think that might be the first penalty i've actually missed on this fifa that wasn't you know saved as in one that just went wide of the goal i have no idea how that happened sort of set us back on this but it shows how poor our squad is at the moment that i have nobody to bring on off the bench i had to bring on asoro um and each and then yana's i didn't do too bad but an each and asoro both missed key chances as well it could have been easily 4-2 to me that game got a few emails in i got angel correa i was looking at uh inaki williams and ika muniain i could probably get him for about 12 mil i'll see what i can do but with the other two i don't know angel correa maybe not 21 mil and williams 30 mil pretty much so we'll see what we can do a player that I have been looking at and thinking about is Benner. I know he's 29, but we do need somebody that has short and long passing. If you see the preliminary report in the bottom right, he's got three kicks, which are insane. I've scored so many with him in different FIFAs. His vision's good, short passing's good, long passing's good, and his shot power's good. So he might be able to score some from outside the box. I might sort of sit him next to Ndong and Kessie because they can run up and down. And then I've got him instead of McNair, who's not great. So we'll see what we can do with him. All right, a few different ones we've got here. A transfer offer for Kelechi Iheanacho. They said our sum's too low. So what I'll do is probably offer, let's go 6 million for him. See what they do on that. See if they bite. I'm going to try 14 million for Correa. They want 21, but we'll see what we can do. He's only 21, so maybe they'll give us a deep money off. I don't know. I've been told that Athletic Bilbao have been offered 12.5 million for Munyain. I do kind of want him to be a decent player to have, so I'll try and offer 12.5 mil. 37.5 mil for Samu Castellejo, I doubt it. Mitchell Weiss has accepted his contract offer, so I will definitely accept that. He's a really good player. Bilbao want 25 million for Bennett. No. Bilbao are not budging on the Muniain transfer so I guess I'd have to offer 17 and a half I'll keep that in mind but I have had a Hanacho for 6 million accepted he wants 50k though I guess I'll have to give it to him let's go important first team player Atletico Madrid accepted 14 million for Correa I will offer him that and hopefully I can get him for that. And I'm going to sell an HB because I've got him and Ian Acho. Okay, as you can see, we are now on the next match. So what I will do is show that one in the next episode. And I think what I'm going to do for these games now, because the season has finished, I think I'll talk a little bit about the FA Cup final in the next episode. But then after that, I think I might go through transfers and things like transfer rumours because I do quite like talking about them see what players go where they go and who they might get so we'll see what we can do so this will be the end of the episode so thanks for watching if you liked it please give it a like if you really loved it please subscribe and thanks for watching peace